a shot on this one. I'm gonna see beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Welcome back to All Things Rangers and the All Things Rangers Bar Talk segment, where we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Shot, beer, or we're buying everybody around. And, John, it's a good thing you're back because I'm starting with you on this one. After the Tony D'Angelo buyout, it's official that the Rangers wasted the Derek Steppen trade. Beer. Um, only because of the fact that Derek Stepan has just taken a complete nosedive in his career. It, he's hasn't been anywhere close to the player that he was in New York. Um, part of it is because of the fact that he was getting first line minutes and he was scoring 50 to 55 points a year, which is really not good numbers for a first line center. He was never really a legitimate first line center. He was probably the bottom end of number one centers in the league, probably the very worst in the league in that regard. But, um, it, 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 to get rid of that contract, uh, they traded him right before his no movement clause kicked in that year. So that's exactly why I keep talking about the the pressing need for the Sabres to, to to deal Jack Eichel sooner than later, because the Rangers did the same exact thing. They had to get him dealt. It's it's a beer. Um, yeah, sure. Leah Anderson was a bust, and they traded him for that second round pick from LA, which ended up being Will Cooley. Will Cooley could end up being coming a, a decent, you know, middle six, bottom six player, and that that deal ends up turning out to be okay. But yeah, I, I mean, you lean toward shot, but you can't really say, or um, you can't you lean toward buying around, but I can't really say buying around until um, you know we see what happens with Will Cooley. But getting rid of Derek Stepan, they just did it at the right time. So I'm, I'm going beer here. I'll jump. I'll jump first, Anthony, and I'm going to go beer too. Uh, the reason why, again, that the, you're going to get a lot of criticism for it is the Lewis Anderson pickup. They did not need to draft Leas Anderson right there. There were other pressing needs. They they actually drafted out of need. When did they when does the NHL ever do that in the first round? Um oh, ho, 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 ho. Dylan McElrath. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They, when you do that, you're usually going to make a mistake. Take the best available player, put him in your system, and go on from there. One reason why it's not wasted is because D'Angelo did have a fifty three point season. So um that's okay, but then they didn't parlay D'Angelo into anything. And yes, we know that they tried to trade him several different times before last year. But then, of course, um, it, they just got away. Mike says the step up trade was a win. Even other assets don't work out. Yeah, there's, there's subtraction. And again, the subtraction of uh, Tony D'Angelo worked out for the New York Rangers this year because... Um, Fox stocks to the roof, baby. Yeah. Anthony. Uh, I'll do I'll do beer um, mostly because Stepan didn't really uh, didn't really work, work out after he left the Rangers so they didn't really um, it's not like they traded a guy that put you know consistently put up you know a bunch of points in other cities um, you know so I don't think that trade is gonna bite the Rangers in the ass at all yeah sure looking at it now they don't have any really assets from that deal um, but again they got rid of Stepan at the right time uh, so beer for me. Um, just to say one thing about that, yes, we could look at Derek Stepan after the deal, but the truth is you're just going to look at the assets you got back. It almost does not matter what happened. This is my opinion. It doesn't matter what the player you got rid of. It matters what the player, the, the players you got back. All right. So the next one, Adam Fox's contract will exceed $10 million in the AAV. And I got to go to you, Anthony, to start you off on this one. Well, I would, it really depends upon the season that he has this year. Um, you know, because let, let, let's just say he reverts a little bit. I don't think the Rangers are going to get him $10 million. If he replicates the season that he had this year, or, or even better, um, then, yeah, I mean, you, you, you could get a contract that's hovering around ten. Um, if you look at some of the other elite defensemen, what they make, uh, the Drew Dowdies, the Headmans of the world, the, you know, even Roman Yossi, uh, Fox will, will look to his comparables, but again, if he if he steps back this year at all, I don't think we'll get ten million because the Rangers are going to probably say, "All right, you were fat, you were fabulous last season. Um, let's see you do it at a, at a, for a longer period of time before we just give you ten million dollars." Um, 
So it, it's, it has to go either way right now. If he's just as good this year or even better, yes. Um, but if he regresses a little bit, I don't think the Rangers are give him ten million just because you know that'd be that would be tough to really swallow. Give a guy ten million dollars after only one you know high high prolific year. So I think they're going to want to wait to see what he does this year and then reassess at the end of the season. No, nope. I wouldn't say it's just one high prolific year. He was their top pairing, their top defender last year too. Uh, if you look at the numbers analytics wise the analytics are almost as good last year as they were this year so and the eye test would even tell you that as well but um i'm gonna say shot here because i think that they're gonna try to get a deal done this offseason i think they're gonna try to get an extension done i i think they're gonna try to go for eight eight years eight million per 64 over eight years i think that's what they're gonna look at they're gonna try to get him locked up and I wouldn't be shocked if he took it to hometown discount. I really wouldn't. Because remember, this is a guy who spurned two teams to come play here. He wants to be here, a part of this team. He wants to win with this team. I think he understands it. And I think if they give him enough of a pay up raise right now, if they do it, I think they could lock him in long term at a steal of a price at $8 million. And you're right. He doesn't have the service time to, to really get $10 million. But... If he were to have another Norris caliber or even another Norris winning year next year, who knows? So, But I'm going to say shot for now. I, I really think that they're going to try to get a deal done with him this offseason. Um, I'm going to start by saying uh, what I like to do sometimes is uh, with my roommates, I like to put my rent in an envelope way ahead of time around uh, middle of the month. So that way I don't have to worry about getting to the last days to make sure my rent is in. That way I could also budget. That's why it helps me save. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is that's why the Rangers want this contract to happen this season. You know then what you have to spend on Zibanejad. You have to know what you, you spend on uh, Lafreniere, Kako, a lot of guys going forward. So that's why I'm going to say it's... Um, it's a shot that this that this is going to be over ten million dollars. Uh, he's going to take a home down discount, and he's also doesn't have the hammer because he doesn't have enough service time yet. All the things you guys have already said, but that's why the Rangers are going to press this. And Adam Fox is going to take a good deal because it's not going to be the three million dollars Ryan Lindgren has. I also think if, if I'm correct, Adam Fox is not arbitration eligible, so he won't right. have that working in his favor. If he had that. It might be another story. So uh, that's another reason why I don't think it's exceeding 10. Well, moving on to the next one. Um, and I'm actually going to start it as well. But the 2021 Rangers should look at the 2012 Minnesota Wild as a warning. Now, the reason why this has come up is because we were talking about this earlier this week. It was the um, uh, ninth nine-year anniversary of the Minnesota Wild signing uh, Zach Parise and uh, uh, I almost called him Gary Suter. That's his uncle, Ryan Suter. Um, and first off, by the way, I'm buying everybody around on this. Always look to the past to make sure you don't repeat your mistakes. Uh, the Minnesota Wild at that time had the number one farm system in the league. They have won how many playoff series since? Anybody? Have they won one? I don't think they have. They upset Colorado in 2014, the first one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. They upset Colorado after being down 0-2. And then I think they, I think they won another. I, I think it's two, actually, now that I think about it. I, but I, I think they won one other, and that was it. Nino Niederreiter, the game-winning goal. Thank you for reminding me. Like I said, Tampa Mayor, we all say stupid things. But you're, you're dumber than mine. But uh, I got to go with... I, I got to go buying everybody around on this. Take into precaution everything that you're doing. Evaluate your talent. Do your job. And yes, Justin, you're right about this. Regardless, zero cups. So that's how you can mess up your future by mismanaging your cap and not identifying the right players to keep. And next thing you know, you're in last place and doing it all over again, Buffalo. So, uh, Phil. 
I'm only going to say shot because I don't think this is the right team to be using. I, I think the, the team that you want to use is Toronto Maple Leafs. Toronto Maple Leafs are the team that the Rangers should be looking at and saying, hey, let's not get top heavy. Let's let's not abandon our uh, our focus on drafting in areas. Uh, let's not ignore goaltending and defense. But the Rangers already have goaltending and defense at the Wazoo. I mean, if, even if you look beyond in the organization, beyond Chesterkin and Georgiev, Dylan Garand was named the Canada's World Junior Team, won a gold medal with them, even though he didn't play much for them. But he's one of the best goaltenders in the WHL right now. Uh, I mean, you look at uh, Tyler Wall, who was really good in the NCAA, you know, Adam Huska. They've got pieces in the system that are good pieces. Olaf Lindbaum, if he if he could just stay healthy, could be a good piece for them, too. The Rangers are really good with developing goaltenders. Don't know how they do it. Benoit Allaire aside, I should say. I don't know how they do it, but they do. And defense, they obviously have that figured out. Fox, Lindgren, Miller. Nils Lundqvist, Zachary Jones, Matthew Robinson, Braden Schneider. I mean, Tom Reunion, they, they have pieces up and down. So Toronto couldn't figure out defense if it smacked them upside the head with a goalie helmet. I mean, so they, they've already kind of, you know, figured out how to avoid that. Now it's just managing the cap. Now it's managing the cap and bringing in the right players. So I'm going to say shot to this. They should be avoiding, not, you know, how not to. They should write a book on how not to be the Toronto Maple Leafs is what they should do. By the way, check out my editorial about using the Toronto Maple Leafs as a cautionary tale. Anthony. I'm going to go shot only because the, the Wild signed, obviously, Frieze and Suter the same day on the, on the 4th of July or whatever, the 5th. But there's not really a, and I'm saying shot because there's not like two high profile free agents right now that the Rangers could you know, sign both of them, that would be as big of a deal this offseason. So that comparison alone makes me say shot. But, um, you know, the, listen, the Rangers are, you know, our team that rebuilt and went, it went really fast. Uh, they got good prospects. Um, there's no need for them to go out and, you know, do something silly with a contract to players or a player that um, could, you know, put them in a, you know, bind going forward. So, um but like John said, just don't be the Toronto Maple Leafs, really. I mean, that's that's a playbook there that no one should follow because they are they haven't won a playoff round in forever, and they have a two top-heavy lineup, those four guys that are making so much money. Um, as long as the Rangers don't do that, I think they'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm also doing this because they had the number one farm system that year because that's – and everybody talked about how great they were going to be, and it, it never materialized. And – it's not like they didn't have good coaching at, at different points. So we're going to move on. So uh, maybe I was just a little bit thin on my question. Did you like the video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.